Добрый вечер. I am returning to give you another edition of Russian figure skating coaches gone crazy. I am Dave Lees, and this is the skating lesson. If you are new here, please remember to smash that like button and subscribe, because what I am about to tell you may indeed surprise you. Well, earlier today, things reached a new fever pitch as this Russian figure skating scandal reached the heights of the Kremlin. Today, during a press conference, Dmitry Peskov, spokesperson from Vladimir Putin, was asked about this conflict. Do you think that the scandal has grown so much that it has already reached the Kremlin and the Kremlin should deal with this? I think that my colleague, the Minister of Sport, will comment on this if necessary. This is not absolutely a question for the Kremlin, Peskov said in response to a question from journalists about whether the conflict between the figure skating coaches and the Kremlin is being monitored and whether it will affect the positions of Russian figure skating in general. Now, Dmitry Peskov is known for being the spokesman and best friend of Russian President and Prime Minister Vladimir Putin, but more importantly, he is also the husband of 2006 Olympic ice dance champion and diva Tatiana Navka. Now, she has done more in her day than deny Tanith Belbin a gold medal and dance to the Pink Panther. She also performed as a Holocaust victim with prison garbs and dirt on her face during a Russian edition of Dancing on Ice. Now, Tatiana Navka and Dmitry Peskov have been embroiled in scandals their entire marriage. Remember, Tatiana Navka and Dmitry Peskov were the subject of a Guardian investigation in February of 2019, and that investigation mentioned offshore bank accounts that were in the British Virgin Islands. They mentioned all sorts of property information scandals going on in Moscow and IRS tax fraud. So that is interesting. But their marriage even got off to a scandalous start when Dmitry Peskov wore a watch that was valued at $670,000 at their wedding. Now that's interesting because that watch was worth more than Peskov's declared income for all of his years of service as a state employee. They then followed that up by vacationing on a yacht that was worth 350,000 euros per week to rent. That yacht was known as the Maltese Falcon. Now, I tend to enjoy how Dmitry Peskov and Vladimir Putin enjoy rhythmic gymnasts and Olympic ice dancers. It reminds me of how much President Trump enjoys beauty queens. But I think that the Russians know where the real beauty queens are at. Because remember, in 2015, Vladimir Putin wasn't photographed anywhere for a week, which was a big scandal. And then a Swiss tabloid reported that he was actually there because his mistress, Alina Kabayeva, was giving birth to their child. And if you recall, Alina Zagitova is named after Russian Olympic champion rhythmic gymnast Alina Kabayeva, meaning that Alina Zagitova is named after Vladimir Putin's mistress. Now, earlier today, Alexei Zelezhnyakov the off-ice dance coach for Team Tudbaritza weighed in on this scandal. And he had a lot to say because he has known Eteri Georgievna for many years, and she is not a public figure at all. She doesn't love interviews, photo shoots, and stuff like that, especially talking out in the public. Everyone, calm down. Everything that Team Tudbaritza does is work, work, work. They don't have time for bullshit. These people don't have time for intrigues, hype, and PR. That's what people do that are jealous of us. But when the coaches are saying something, you deserved it. Long story short, shut your mouths and do your own work. Luck and success will come to you. Well, Olympic champion Evgeny Plashenko had comments of his own about Zelezhnyakov's remarks about Team Tudbaritza, and he took to his Instagram stories to respond. Do you know yourself what you said? Who opened here their mouth? Who even are you? Give me a magnifying glass. Is it not hard enough to answer with Svetayeva? 
Learn from your boss how to answer serious people that you don't end up as the idiot. Well, Svetayeva was that poet that we talked about yesterday that the Russians love. And remember, the boss is a real signifier there because Terry Dubaridze is a boss and is a female boss over Alexei Zelezhnyakov. He's basically calling him a heel or a podkablushnik, as we would say in Russian. Now, just because Team Dubaridze does not have time for this kind of bullshit, that doesn't mean that Marina Hoffman is too busy to weigh in, because our favorite member of Team Dubaridze took to the message board sports.ru to talk about this important scandal. Marina Hoffman wrote, I comment here for the first and the last time. Stop bullying a Terry. She has done everything that she could, you see, Everything. A Terry even asked Elena, a woman who tells Alina Zagitova what to do, to minimize the number of shows and guest events. But a Terry was not heard at all. A Terry asked Alina to stay for the season, but couldn't change her mind. Only a few persons know that Alina that a Terry very much helped Alina in preparing to go to the Worlds. And the last, the greatest motivation is the real love to the profession. Unfortunately, she didn't fall in love with the figure skating, neither with anything else, nor the show, even with the huge contracts. But she fell in love with the name. Well, we all were young girls. I'm sorry, but this is life, but not a professional sport. Now, saying that she fell in love with the name is interesting because it is unclear if she is talking about a boy or the fact that Alina Zagitva may have fallen in love with her own name, meaning fame itself. Well, if anyone has ever fallen in love with fame itself, it is Russian figure skating coaches. And that is why the fans of Team Tudbaritsa and Russian figure skating in general have formed a petition to remove Tatiana Tarasova, the famed coach and commentator, from the airwaves. They feel that she is too biased, too subjective, and lacking proper professionalism in the sport of figure skating. And if anyone should be professional, it is a figure skating commentator in Russia. And they feel that she is too biased and too who favorable to Stepanova and Bukin and Evgenia Medvedeva? Well, Alexei Yagudin had to weigh in on this himself because he cannot stand for this, this kind of outrage, these kinds of criticism about the great Tatiana Tarasova. He said, there are a lot of scandals in my favorite sport. I didn't really want to climb into it. Moreover, the scandals involve people I respect and some I admire. But I can't comment on the bullying of an outstanding coach and my second mom, Tatiana Tarasova. I can't. A certain group. They're not very large, but still, they are activists and they are engaged in bullying of a great man, Tatiana Anatolevna, not only a legendary coach, but also a brilliant commentator. You need to appreciate legends, not to do nonsense. Be smarter, comrades. Appreciate the great ones. I love you always. Tarasova, for me, forever. Well, Tarasova is for more than just me forever. She is for Averbuk. She is for Ari Zakarian. She is for Alexei Krasnojan and everyone else who then liked and commented on Alexei Yagudin's post. Now, what's amazing is that Alexei Yagudin said that he didn't really want to climb into all of this. But I remember a day or two ago, we were just talking about him liking and commenting and get calling out for all sorts of stuff that was going in. And he seems to enjoy lots of scandals, many of which are self-inflicted. But it is only appropriate that we end this important update with the words of a great coach and commentator, Tatiana Anatolivna Tarasova, because she gave her thoughts about Alina Zagitova's decision, and we have to hear from Tatiana herself. Will Alina return or not? It's a stupid question. 
Hope is a good breakfast, but a bad supper. I hope that she will find herself. She will have a very interesting life. I want to wish her success in how she will manage it. She didn't go into nowhere. She went into Tatiana Novka's show, a wonderful show. She will travel the world as all outstanding athletes did, and we will be able to see her once a year. In order to remain interesting to the audience in the show, she needs to train, and she will probably do it. But it's sad that only three seasons measures the lifespan of an Olympic champion. She is still young and did not learn to lie. We understood what she was talking about. We heard her. We want her a happy life. Many people in our country love her. The main thing is that everything in her life turn out well. Of course she will not return. I think so. We may not have competitions. This is, of course, because of the removal of Rusada, and this is a disaster, and a Terry Tudbaridza ensures the country's victory in ladies' single skating. I have great respect for what Alexei Mishin and Elizaveta Tuktamisheva are doing. She had setbacks, achieved nothing in terms of medals, but she hath returned, learned the quadruple toe loop, restored the triple axle, or our outstanding athlete, two-time world champion Zenya Medvedeva pulled herself out of the hole. She is improving. I respect these people, just as I respect Alina Zagitova's opinion. She manages her life herself. Well, as we move on and move into even greater heights with the Russian nationals approaching, I want to remind all of you that when we think about will Alina return, remember that it is a stupid question. Hope is a good breakfast, but a bad supper. And with that, I remind all of you to comment below, smash that like button, and subscribe. This is The Skating Lesson. Good night.